<laughs> What's wrong, Thrashin' Jackson? Why are you crying? It's horrible, Mr. Meltdown! We're halfway through the year, and there's so little good metal! We have a sincere lack of excellent, high-quality, and interesting material thus far in 2024! Metal is dead! Metal is dying! I'm so overwhelmed with emotion, I'm gonna drink a beer! <laughs> is that all? Really? Dry those eyes, you silly, stupid goose, because as it turns out, there's been tons of excellent, high-quality, interesting material released thus far in 2024. In fact, today, why don't we take this opportunity to talk about some of the best metal albums of 2024 so far. That's right, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, we're pretty much halfway through 2024, and we've talked about a lot of music in the past six months, and in my opinion at least, a lot of it has been really, really, really good. As per the Metal Meltdown's norm, this is not a ranked or numbered list. I am going to talk about each album in order of release, and we're starting off with God is Violence from Cancer Christ, released January 5th via Seeing Red Records. One of the first new albums that I listened to and reviewed here on the Metal Meltdown in 2024, and in my opinion, also still one of the most volatile, one of the most uncompromising, one of the most provocative and powerful, with hyper anti-fascist, anti-government, anti-capitalist, lyricism and imagery, and an overall general aesthetic that appears to be both satirical of devout Christianity and also just legitimately its own version of devout Christianity. Like Cancer Christ lead singer and mastermind Saint Anthony appears to be a genuinely very religious and spiritual person, but also well-informed and educated. He is aware of the faults of Christianity and organized religion. And with Cancer Christ, he is actively fighting against white Christian nationalism and corruption and prejudice and bigotry. He actively calls out contradictions and hypocrisies in organized religion across the album and has these sermon-style interludes in which he preaches the values of Cancer Christ. The whole album feels like a politically charged extreme metal Molotov cocktail. Cancer Christ never hold back, they never let up, and I'm loving it. It's hands down one of the heaviest and most bloodthirsty and uncompromising records of the year. And for that reason alone, you should definitely check it out if you haven't already. Next up, we have Ultra Power from Stryker, released February 2nd via Record Breaking Records. And out of everything we're talking about today in this video, I don't really think there's anything more flat out fun than this. A blistering, bombastic, and infectious, and surprisingly intelligent and varied assault of classic heavy metal. With huge arena rock style choruses, and thrashy riffs, and soaring, shredding guitar pyrotechnics, and 80s synths galore. It's got gang vocals, and synthesized vocoder vocals, and funky bass lines, and breakdowns, and a really great sense of humor. It's catchy, it's wild, it's catchy and wild and genuinely unpredictable and so well performed and produced. Stryker really let their freak flag fly on this one, man, and it results in not just one of the most fun albums of the year, but Stryker's best album to date. Next up, we have Sparagmos from Spectral Voice, released February 9th via Dark Descent Records, and I can neatly summarize this album as an actual nightmare from another dimension. It's like this monolithic slab of haunting, ominous, oppressive, and very extreme death doom. Lots of feedback and gristle and darkness and shadowy textures and angular and obtuse sequences, towering walls of powerful death doom with agonizing monstrous vocals. 
it's immersive and it's striking and it's equal parts hypnotizing and horrifying. This thing just swallows you whole and spits you out, man. I have to concede, I haven't listened to this album as much as other albums we're talking about today in this video, but that's not because it's my least favorite. That's because I enjoy being able to sleep at night and I enjoy living a full, happy, healthy life. Next up, we have Moon Healer from Job for a Cowboy, released February 23rd via Metal Blade Records. It took nearly 10 years, but we finally got a follow-up to the progressive and technical death metal opus Sun Eater. And it's just as good, if not in some ways maybe even better. Moon Healer is an incredibly expansive and imaginative album with some of the most creative and dynamic songwriting and production I've ever heard from Job for a Cowboy. Wild tempo changes and grooves and twists and turns galore here. Some incredibly melodic and emotive and evocative songwriting as well. I love how this album not only picks up where Moon Healer left off musically, but also narratively and conceptually. With an unnamed protagonist going on a quest for profound enlightenment inspired by psychedelic drugs and eventually finding himself or herself or themselves disconnected from reality and the people they love. Like, yeah, sure, it genuinely feels as if we're gliding through some psychedelic cosmos and that in and of itself is exciting and cool, but also, there's a lot of anguish and despair behind everything, and you really feel that all of the time. I know some people still view Job for a Cowboy as a dumb, generic, deathcore band, and I know some people just don't take them seriously because of the name. In my opinion, these people are stupid. They don't know what they're missing out on. Definitely check this out if you haven't already. You probably have. It was one of the most anticipated death metal albums of 2024, but just in case you didn't, do so now. Next up, we have Unextinct from Hideous Divinity, released March 22nd via Century Media Records. These guys have become well known for creating dense, multifaceted, dark, brutal, technical death metal, pulling influence also from avant-garde and progressive and brutal death metal. And in many ways, Unextinct is more of exactly that, just bigger, bolder, better. It's more unpredictable and more frenzied, but it's also more and better cram-packed. Everything is very well stacked in balance, like layers of a delicious cake. Yummy! And all of this is emboldened by lyrics and by a general concept that pulls influence from the original Dracula novel, as well as 1922's Nosferatu and 1979's Nosferatu the Vampire. Like, there's something just so objectively intense and badass about the story of this master vampire slaughtering his foes, draining the life from their bodies, set to the soundtrack of dark, dense, masterfully produced and arranged technical and brutal death metal. And with every single listen, this thing gets better and better. I find more and more to enjoy, more and more to appreciate. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about this thing, but they should. It's one of the best technical death metal albums of the year. Next up, we have Come of the Storm from High on Fire, released April 19th via MNRK Heavy. This album is so good, it would not shock me if High on Fire won another Grammy for it. High on Fire aren't necessarily doing anything brand new per se on this album. If you're familiar with High on Fire and their blend of psychedelic sludge and stoner and thrash metal, then there's a good chance you already know what to expect. But even then, there are a few twists and turns all throughout this record. Some incredibly cathartic and expressive melodies and grooves, some Middle Eastern influences and weird guitars and hypnotic tribal percussion. And even when there aren't twists and turns, God damn it, it's still just so fucking good. Tons of sludgy riffs and textures and battering beatdowns and thunderous percussive assaults all emboldened and grounded and anchored by Matt Pike's Lemmy Kilmeister-esque snarls and scowls. They're just versatile enough within the confines of their sound to keep things fresh and exciting and interesting across Come of the Storm, and this thing is just so consistently satisfying. It's fun to mosh with this thing, it's fun to smoke your brains out with this thing, it's just a fun record. 
through and through. Next up, we have Vibermacht from Folterkammer, released April 19th via Century Media Records, which can be somewhat kind of sort of neatly described as experimental, baroque, classical, opera-infused black metal about BDSM and sexual liberation and hot German dummy mommies. You'll have tremolo riffs and blast beats and harpsichords and strings and these, like, classical waltz-style movements and progressions and operatic vocal wailings and more sinister, atypical black metal shrieks and cackling vocals. There's weird and slightly erotic spoken word bits and the literal cracking of a whip at a certain point. Hands down, the most unique album we're talking about in today's video. One of the most unique albums of 2024. Anybody attempting to argue otherwise will not be taken seriously. Personally, I love it. I love the energy of this thing. I love some of the vocal performances, which are regal and powerful and amazing enough to genuinely be pulled from a straight-up opera. It's definitely not for everyone, but I would genuinely recommend this to everyone, even if just because there's nothing else quite like it. Next up, we have Phantoma from Unleash the Archers, released May 10th via Napalm Records, and no word of a lie, I fully expected Mad Mike to jump up from behind my couch and scream with joy upon hearing that name. Unleash the Archers have become somewhat controversial and polarizing as of late because of their use of AI in the creative process. They used AI to create artwork and music videos, uh, to promote this album, but more importantly, they also used AI to assist in the writing process, literally to write lyrics. Normally, that would be a problem. Normally, I'd be like, hey, that's fucking lazy. Fuck you. But, hear me out, in this case, I think we can make an exception, because Phantoma is a concept album about an AI unit. And this AI unit, nicknamed Phantoma, is dreaming of revolution, of freedom, of a life outside of a literal dystopian bubble city. It feels like we're hearing directly from Phantoma, not someone writing and singing on behalf of Phantoma, but Phantoma herself. On top of that, the music itself, AI assisted or not, is genuinely pretty incredible. Some of the most dynamic and entertaining music that Unleash the Archers have ever made, with so many different twists and turns, so many new influences brought into the mix. As far as I'm concerned, this album single-handedly proves that not only is ethical use of AI in the creation of art and music possible, but it can also be really innovative and really exciting. Next up, we have Mind Burns Alive from Paul Bearer, released May 17th via Nuclear Blast Records. A common criticism I, I've seen uh, levied upon this album is that it's not metal enough, it doesn't have enough guitars, it doesn't have enough drums, it's not doomy enough, but... Paul Bearer is not a band that has ever emphasized or prioritized big riffs and beats and super brutal metal assaults. They're a band that has relied on more expressive and emotive drawls and melodies, and with Mind Burns Alive specifically, they're really stripping things down. This is the most naked and bare and intimate that Paul Bearer have ever been, and it also has some of their most colorful and effective melodies and atmospheres. There's some beautiful use of saxophone and some incredibly passionate guitar solos and licks all across the record, great multi-layered vocals that are simplistic but carry a lot of heart and weight, great use of synthesizers and keyboards and acoustic guitars as well. This album is more about creating a vibe rather than being outright pummeling. It may not be heavy sonically, especially not in comparison to other albums we're talking about here, but it makes up for that by being very heavy emotionally and tonally. And last but not least, we have the Stygian Rose from Crypt Sermon released June 14th via Dark Descent Records. We very recently reviewed this album here on the Metal Meltdown, like literally two videos ago. 
I don't see much of a point in further evaluating and dissecting what I've already thoroughly evaluated and dissected. I will simply reiterate that this is an amazing album. And also, if you didn't like the aforementioned Paul Bear, if you wanted something more heavy and doomy and dark, boom, this is it. It is over the top and bombastic, sure, but that feels earned because of this story, which is more or less a tale of desperation and yearning for love. It's theatrical and romantic, and most importantly, filled with some amazing performances, especially the vocals. Holy shit. The story behind this album is insane, and the stuff that inspired that story is even more insane. There's a literal sex magician involved, which I didn't even know was a real thing until recently. Definitely check out my album review. I explain everything really well there. I don't feel like repeating myself. It's a fantastic album, one of the best of the year. That's what you need to know. That's what's important. And voila, those are, in my opinion, the best metal albums of 2024 so far. See Thrash and Jackson, 2024 is filled with so much exciting music. There's nothing amazing and exciting about all that pussy poser, hipster nerd twink core garbage. High on fire? More like, you must be high to think that mainstream Grammy Award winning dribble is good. Job for a cowboy? He better get a job. He ain't paying the bills with that shit. No Carrie King, no classic true metal, just a bunch of artsy fartsy liberal gay millennial soy boy shit. All you've done is prove what I said before. There's no more good metal. Metal is dead. I'm so overwhelmed with emotion that I will once again drink a beer. You know, I really should have known that that's what you were going to say. Oh, it's Fuck it. I tried. It's now it's your turn. What were your favorite metal albums of 2024 so far? Let me know in the comment section below. Also on Discord and stuff. Press this button to subscribe. Look, there's even more videos here. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day. Quit your fucking crying.